it finally happened. There's one question I feel like I ask way more than I should in like every single episode that I record of The Long Dark for this channel. And the one time, the one time that I forget to ask it, I forget my bedroll. Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Against a Lot series where uh, we need to go back to the Broken Railroad <laughs> because I genuinely forgot my bedroll. So thankfully, I have everything I need and we've dropped off the Trabois and it should be a relatively quick trip. And hopefully those are not my last words. We'll see. But I am going to go ahead and scarf down some food because um, we're going to end up like making use of those cattails, by the way. I was just talking about in the previous episodes how handy it was that with the current sort of settings, I haven't needed to consume all of the cattails that I've got. And um, definitely feeling that. We want to make sure we keep the scrap metal, but there are a lot of things that I can probably put in storage right now. Let's go ahead and put like... This hurts me a little, but we're going to go ahead and transfer that. Just getting rid of that extra ammo. We will come back for it. Um, the Travois we'll go ahead and put away as well. Oh, the locker's full. What do you know? The locker's actually full. So we might have to use first aid kit as well. Yep, that's got some room. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm not going to put the canister away just because I would hate to forget that. But I can put the salt up. Not going to need that at the moment. Quality tools. Yep, we can drop that. Flare shells. I can lose more than half of them. Arrows. Not needed at the moment. The travel out we will also put up. Just We're going to do that on general principle as well. Just because that thing has been such a pain. It's going to be nice just to feel like I can do that. So here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm thinking in terms of, yes, I need to go back and get my bedroll, but then on my way back, on my way back, I will take care of the stuff that I need to take care of in Four Way Muskeg for Signal Void. So hopefully we can kind of kill two birds with one stone here. All right, that should be mostly everything. I do have a lot of rose hips on me, but that's enough to make the journey, and I don't want to dally. So let's get going. We have decent weather at the moment, is it? No, that's not advisable. I've never actually tried to go down that way, so... Immediately got curious as soon as I did that. How many stems do I have on me? Yeah, those are all of my re remaining stems, and I'm going to keep those on me. No particular reason, definitely not thinking of... <laughs> my last exit from Broken Railroad just a few episodes ago. But thankfully, where I left the bedroll, it's not far. It's not like we need to go all the way back to the far end of the Broken Railroad. Don't worry, I left it by the campfire, remember? I meant to go back to that campfire, but then the blizzard started and that was so jarring. And I was so focused on living that I sort of beelined, stims included, I sort of beelined for the back end of the zone so that I could not die in Broken Railroad. Didn't die, which I'm quite happy about, but um, totally left my bedroll right in that spot by the fire where I put it down. Ironically, the only reason I put the bedroll down was, you know, I was planning to possibly sleep by the fire or rest by the fire at least and enjoy its warmth. And I was using it just to make sure that I had enough room for the fire and the bedroll in that reasonably wind secluded spot, but then it, it was a blizzard. And so it's like, well, there's no point. It's too cold anyway. We're going back. So right now, you know what? I'm not going to say anything out loud. I am going to go out of my way as of this moment. <laughs> I'm going to go out of my way not to actually say anything about how things are going. We're not going to talk about the weather. We're going to, we're not going to talk about how quick this is going to be. We're just we're just going to keep moving. It's like the commentary equivalent of whistling obnoxiously so that um, no one thinks you're up to no good because that that works. That is a foolproof tried and true method. When shenaniganry is in fact not taking place ever 
Alright, I see some saplings. I'm going to veer over there and get those real quick. Let me have the rifle out just in case. sapling and there's that might as well grab this stick while I'm looking at it it's really strange is anyone else thinking to themselves like where is the wolf that normally hangs out right here because the last couple of times I've been in this area, the wolf has not been there. It might be a consequence of the reduction of wildlife over time. Maybe this wolf got, shall we say, deprecated. Got kicked out of the load order. Because there's normally a wolf. There's lots of sticks right there, but I would rather keep moving. I've got my saplings. That's good enough for me. We are definitely going to pick cattails along this route. I just need to kind of conserve my energy, so I'm trying... I'll grab the rose hips, even though I already have plenty of rose hips. One thing I may do if there's... Oh, hello. Let's grab that. Because... If it gets cold, if I need to, like, have a pit stop going either direction at the uh, train cars... If there's extra coal there, which there might still be, I think I picked all of it up, but if there's extra coal, if I can find any, or just extra wood, like, having what I need to, you know, light a quick fire, wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Genuinely, if, if the weather persists in its current state, trying so hard not to say things... <laughs> getting so superstitious because of this freaking game. Oh my god. If the weather persists in its current state, there's some cattails right there, but that's a little bit out of the way. This shouldn't take too long, I would think. We need to go up there to take care of the signal void stuff, but I'd rather have my bed roll first. Because that's just not something you want to be caught without in the long dark. So the plan is crossing the muskeg, hoping for the best. I'm going to start picking cattails as I go, though. And then I will stick to my plan to head into Bleak Inlet, I think. Um, I think that's a good next step, just to kind of mix things up. I've gotten lots of familiarity with Bleak Inlet over the last year and a few months, more than I ever had before, which is nice. That's mainly from the Against All Challenges meta series that I did when I brought the channel back, which, especially after the last few months of um, everything that I've been working on to kind of smooth things out, seems like ages ago, doesn't it? Tempest Fugit. As the Romans said. Nice day in the muskeg. So far. There I go saying things. Shouldn't do that. I mean, I could start sprinting a little bit. Another thing to bear in mind, too, is that if I had some teas cooked with these rose hips that I'm collecting... Wouldn't it be nice if you could make, like, a cattail tea? <laughs> Maybe it wouldn't. Maybe that would, like, force me to make too many choices that I don't want to make. All 
Oh, hello. As I drop the cattail stock on the ground. That doesn't happen too often, but... Now that I've seen that even once on a recording, it makes me wonder, how many times have I done that? Not realizing I just dropped a cattail by accident. I just didn't look. Because you left-click, right-click when you don't need the cattail heads. But anyway, if I had the, um... The roasted teas, I'd put them in the thermos. Sorry. Insulated flask. And that would be a way to guarantee that I stayed warm. But right now, I'm actually pretty warm regardless. And also, we're about halfway through the muskeg already. That's how quickly we're moving. The bear is over there to my right. On my way through the zone, the first time there were wolves over here to the left. So I need to be mindful of that. Am I passing any cattails? Yes, I am. so weird to look at my uh, quick action or the, the wheel I suppose the action wheel and just not see that bedroll ask myself that question so much See, I'm, I'm trying so hard not to say things because I'm sitting here in the back of my mind. Can I like, does it count to the long dark as saying things that the long dark hears? If I just like voice my subconscious, if I like tell you right now what I'm thinking in the back of my mind, in some uh, convoluted illogical way, that is making sense to me right now. So I'm just going to voice my subconscious and we're going to pretend that I'm not saying things that loud. Okay, you ready? This is pretty nice weather. <laughs> like, the muskeg is being very kind at the moment. It's surprising. You heard nothing, game. I didn't say anything. I'm just literally thinking out loud. That was not commentary. Those were not words. Those were thoughts. There's a difference. If you could all nod and smile simultaneously right now, I, I, I would appreciate the moral support. Everybody watching, just nod and smile. <laughs> that will make the universe listen retroactively. Because, of course, you're not nodding and smiling at the same time that this is happening, you're nodding and smiling after this has already trespassed. Like, already transpired. Trespassed? Transpired. Alright, so we've got at least two wolves over here to my left. I'm gonna veer this direction slightly, just to avoid them, which I did the first time I was here. Hopefully not step on any thin ice. Is that another bear? Oh my god, it is. That is a second bear. Interesting. So I've got a bear straight ahead of me. Cattail's right in front of me. A wolf. Dangerously close. This could aggro the wolf. Hang on. I want these. I want them. I'm sorry. It's a group of four. And I haven't gone crazy grabbing cattails in a while. Alright, there's the bear. Holy crap. I'm literally trying to thread this needle between... You did not just turn that way. You jerk. Okay, the wolf turned as well, thank god. That's a lucky break. Now we're gonna have to sprint a little bit. Hoping on this ice is thin. Alright, 
I'm going to grab these real quick. Hopefully not pay the price. If I'm lucky, I can do this. Like, I might be able to get all the way back to the train cars and rest by a fire. Ooh. I could probably use that old man's beard lichen. Because I don't have any antiseptic on me at the moment. That's one thing I need to be very mindful of, is that I, I genuinely took... I didn't record videos for four weeks. And, you know, I've, I've had some people, you know, point out some gameplay mechanics, of, especially regarding the travel lot to me. And it's like, listen, this is my playtime. This series. Since the update came out, it's been these recordings. So I'm very much still learning some of the new stuff on account of how chaotic things have been for the last couple of months, as I've said a few times. And like, in addition to still learning the new stuff, since I haven't played for a month, it's like, mm, let's not forget basics, especially since difficulty is lowered, because that would suck. Hello? Oh, that was the ruined snow shelter collapsing as I walked in. Um, interesting. I'm not going to worry about that. Alright, I don't have to go very far here. I really don't. And I, last time I was here, I, I did shoot the wolf, yeah? I was on the ice, and the wolf went left. I was like, of course the wolf went left, and then killed the wolf. Okay. It's so weird to be back here. Like, right when I said all the back and forth was done, too. Let's get this over with. Okay, so... Acorn tree. Those crows are probably circling the wolf carcass. That would be my guess. Yeah, so the bedroll is down here. Not too much farther. Oh, nice. Still some cattails down here. Which makes sense. I never really stopped here to harvest them. Alright, there's the dead wolf right where I left him. And let's go ahead and take the route that we took when I first came to this spot. What are you circling? Oh yeah, there's a body there. I checked it last time I was here, but... There is, in fact, a body there on the ice. Not far from the bedroll itself. The bedroll is going to be over here to the right. And there it is. Right where I left it. Let's go ahead and pick that up. And I'm guessing it is... Oh, wow. Not frozen. That's surprising. Condition is a little bit worse for wear. Do I need that recycled can? Probably not. I'm going to go ahead and drop those just to shed the extra weight. I am actually pretty encumbered at this point, which is hilarious. <laughs> I love how I have the one salt. Literally just for the memes. Not because I need the salt for anything. It's just for the memes. Since we're about to head back, I want to make sure that I have some cattail stalks so that I'm not having to tend to my food situation until I am definitely sheltered and ready to go. Okay. I did check this, right? And you. Yeah. Good to go. There are feathers. May as well grab these while I'm here. Where's the third one? Hello? Third feather? Yes, no, maybe so? Come on, we got 4K. Should be nice and obvious. Unless the feather's, like, up there somewhere. Like, sitting on an edge that it should, should, shouldn't... Words. Okay. Sitting where it shouldn't be. That's the phrase that I was looking for. <laughs> Let's head back this way. Alright, so we're gonna have to go a slightly different route. 
but that's okay. Do I want these cattails? Do I care? Yeah, sure, why not? This is working out pretty well. Because remember, we haven't traveled that far into Broken Railroad, so I should be able to turn right back around. And frankly, even if the weather gets bad, at this point, I'm pretty much home free. Because I can sprint my way back to safety and just generally be okay. Any cattails in this little thicket here? Really? None. None at all. Not even over here. Weird. I can still tell that my sensitivity is, like, much higher than it was. And I don't know what to make of that, because as you've seen, I've, I've changed it in real time during recordings. The settings are not exactly high. And it's not a DPI thing either for my mouse, because my DPI is actually pretty manageable as well. So that I don't have those ridiculous, you know, this thing happen too much. Entertaining as it is for y'all. There's an entire subset of people that's just like, no, you should turn those settings up, Adrian. We like it when those settings are higher than they should be. <laughs> I'm well aware of that. Okay, we are officially at half, in, or not encumbrance, but half exhaustion. So this is one of the reasons I wasn't sprinting too much this episode, because I didn't want to get more tired than this. Because here we are with our bedroll, just getting back to the Forlorn Muskeg transition. And we still have to get to the train car, and we're going to start getting slower from here on out. So this is going to be... We're already a lot slower. Well, not a lot, but a little bit slower on account of carrying all those cattails. I could eat some to attenuate that, as I just did, <laughs> before picking up more. So we'll stop at the train car, and I think, unless I get a curveball from the game, I should be able to get up to the signal tower by the end of this episode. We'll see. We will see. Okay. Good god, this game is gorgeous. I just, I don't get tired of it. Just the subtle coloring of the clouds, because you know the day is about to be at its end, and, you know, the sunset's coming, like... They did such a good job. And it's amazing, too. There have been... I think there's been more than one. And to be fair, I haven't played them, so maybe I should. But there's been more than one survival sandbox game that's come out in the vein of, like... God, there are so many that use a similar looking engine, like um, Green Hell, uh, even Nightingale that just came out, which is really fun, Icarus, Medieval Dynasty, uh, Fountain of Youth. There are so many that kind of fit a certain archetype. Right, there's two wolves right there and a bear in the distance. And there are a few that have tried to come out and have like super realistic winter graphics, you know? Where it's... The snow is really detailed and it's like the long dark. There have been a few that are very much like the long dark, but they're going for the realistic look. And the more you see those sort of show up and generally not even pass the acid test most of the time that I've seen anyway. Again, haven't played them. Maybe I maybe I need to. If there's one that you would recommend, let me know of the ones that attempt this kind of setting with realistic graphics, but you can just tell there's a certain longevity that games and maybe art in general, but certainly games like this game when they use this kind of art style, where they're intentionally not trying to be as pretty as possible, and they're trying to be a little bit more um, 
creative with the way they represent detail and beauty. And as a consequence, here we are 10 years later, and we're still playing this game with all the love, if not more, than we played, played it with the first time we saw it. And the graphics have gotten better too, but they've stayed true to the original vision. And there's just so much to be said for the, um, the power of this kind of art style, because it's still so pretty. How many times over the years have you heard me say, man, this game is beautiful? Like, you can say that about a lot of games, but Long Dark just has something special to it. You can't quite put your finger on it. You can't describe it. But it absolutely does. I am amazed at what's about to happen. Because the fact that we haven't had any kind of bad weather at all is mind-blowing. I will say stuff out loud at this point, because I can. I can afford to. Wow. Look at this. What a lovely 4K Forlorn Muskeg sunset. All right, almost back to the rail cars, and we can take a break. And then maybe, if the weather continues to be this kind, we'll, we'll have to sleep, and that's the thing. When we sleep, the weather might finally turn, because this has been a long run of nice weather here. Not complaining at all. But we're due for a storm at this point. So that's where I'm going to align my expectations. And I'd love to be surprised. But I would imagine after we sleep to regain our full sort of... It's dusk, so I can't be far behind. Thank you for that, Jennifer. It is in fact dusk. Once we regain our full amount of energy, I would imagine there's going to be a storm. If there's not, we might have Aurora. And it, if that's the case, then that'll give me... One of the main things I, I set up with this code was I made sure that the auroras were maximized so as to create a little bit more tension with the, di with the difficulty having been lowered as much as it was. I'm really happy I did that. All right, there's some newsprint. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and start a fire. I don't have that many sticks. I don't have my fire strikers either. Apparently I put all those away. So, okay, I'll have to go grab one of those. God knows I have enough of them. I just forgot to grab them out of storage. Just new habits to be gained. Now that that move all function has such importance. Alright, Cedar Limb, 45 minutes. Yeah, let's go ahead and break this down. Alright, there's an Aurora. <laughs> How much would it have sucked if there was a bear, like, right around the corner? Oh, you're fine. Oh, I didn't mean to put that torch on the fire, but okay. We live here now. Five hours, quote-unquote, on the fire. I say quote-unquote because... It's going to be longer than five hours. Okay. Um, let me take a quick look around for more coal. I'm pretty sure I've already scouted this area for coal. We do have an Aurora, which is nice, but right now I need to rest, and I want the fire to last as long as it possibly can. I would honestly be stunned if I found any more coal here, because I, I do think I've picked all of it up already. But I'm open to surprises.
All right, so there's sticks, and that's nice and everything. What I was really hoping for was a bit of coal. And it looks like that is not going to happen. However, we do have scrub brushes. Let's go ahead and break these down. Not quite the same, but I'll take it. Oh, that's another stick. All right, starting to get cold. Let's go back inside. Gotta warm up somehow. You'll be fine. I look forward to the next patch where the uh, the interface for adding stuff to the fire will be in a little bit better shape. Um, or at least I certainly hope it will be. Okay, so I don't have a lot of water. I should probably take care of that. I'm not going to do a, like, a lot of water. I mean, I guess I could. I just need to not do the full amount here. There we go. All right, let's drink that. I think I'll probably just stick with that amount. This pack is getting kind of heavy. I know. All right, six hours, 31 minutes. That's enough time. Let's chow down on a few cattails. Just go down to 30 for now. I'm pretty happy with where my encumbrance is. Well, not at the moment because I'm tired, but it's not going to be that bad at all once I'm rested. Okay. So let's sleep for seven hours. That fire should still be going for an hour or two when I wake up, which I will then you know, make another decision about how long I'm going to sleep here. Yep. Let's go ahead and sleep for another... First of all, let's drink. I'm going to sleep for another three hours. Thankfully, we don't have any condition to recover. And this will fully rest me. And also, it should bring the sun up. Interesting. All right, woke up fully rested. There's a save point. Snow's coming down, but in the next one, I am going to head up, uh, where is it? Hello? Hang on. That was a cool kind of firelight effect on the... ...sights. We're going to head up there and take care of that. And then it's a matter, let's take a quick look before I end the episode at the objectives for Signal Void. So we're going to repair the transmitter in the Muskeg, but then there's a signal... Well, see, right now it's saying that there's a signal in Hush River Valley. I think we are getting that because we've already repaired the transmitter in Mountain Town. I think when we repair the one in Fort Wayne Muskeg, there, there'll be a signal in Bleak Inlet. So we're going to go there first and see what's going on with that. I really, I have no idea. I've never played through Signal Void. This was my first time. There's a reason that, like, even though this is a series that's showcasing the um, follow-up to Signal Void... There's a reason we've avoided kind of going there so far, and it's that I I want to actually experience Signal Void first, and I would like to experience it with all of you. So, given the chaos of the last few months and getting this new rig up and running, it's taken much longer than anticipated, but we are on the way now, and I appreciate you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. For early episodes, channel emotes, and member badges, look for the Join button. New episodes drop at 1 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time every day but Wednesday, and comments are always welcome, so leave your thoughts below. And I'll see you next time.